Hi, remote learners. This is Mrs. Childers, and um, I'm making a separate video for you guys for Tuesday, March the 2nd, which you'll get tomorrow. Um, so in a turn of events, I am quarantining at home today and tomorrow at least, um, awaiting test results for a family member. And so today I did a lot of Zooming, and uh, Zooming and recording is not a skill set that I have yet mastered. <clears throat> so I am just going to go over what I did for the class today. This will be about 15 minutes. And um, I just want to remind you that you guys have a in the three paragraphs due on Friday. I'm pushing your due date back by one day. You have your intro, history, and confirmation point one due in paragraph form on Friday. And the one thing that I had talked about requiring of you all, I have decided to lift for this week, and that is your Works Cited page. So <clears throat> instead of turning that in this week, I'll have you work on that and submit that with next Friday's assignment. So I just wanna take a few minutes and talk to you about your history paragraph. We talked about um, the introduction. And um, so history, all of you have points in your outline that can go into history. And you may use some of those points, but not all of those points. And we wanna talk about how you can knit those together in a nice, coherent, um, cohesive paragraph. So the first thing I wanna talk about is a topic sentence. And we haven't discussed this. I've just had you get content for history, but of course you've learned since grammar school that every paragraph needs a topic sentence that announces the intention for that paragraph. And so this is a little bit different, um, but I'm actually gonna give you a couple of examples. And if you want to grab one of these as a template to use for your paper, that would be fine. So you're gonna have a topic sentence that makes clear that you're talking about history and maybe even some definition of terms. So um, to better understand this issue, it is important to understand its history. Except instead of this issue, um, I would probably be more specific. In order to understand affirmative action and its role in college admissions, it's important to understand its history. Or in order to um, better understand the Confederate flag, it's important to understand its history. Or in, to better understand the current gun debate, it's important to understand its history. Okay, so these are all examples. And then one more, the development of blank is crucial to understanding the present controversy. So the development of, I'm trying to think, one of yours, I'm drawing a blank, fill in an issue. The development of social media is crucial to understanding the present controversy. So, and then there's one more, and I actually filled this in with mine on the border wall. It's important to understand some common terms as well as the history of border protection. So you could say it's important to understand some common terms as well as the history of um, college sports. There's one for you, Andrew. So you're gonna have a topic sentence. You, I'm sure one of those three should work for you. And then those elements that I had you put in your outline, you are gonna include some, not all of those. You're gonna discern what you need. And remember, there is a free flow of information between the history paragraph and your introductory paragraph. So if you put history in the introductory paragraph, don't repeat that history in the history paragraph. So um, you don't have to put your information in any particular order in the history paragraph. But if it's a historical event, or several historical events, please put them in chronological order, okay? Okay, I'm gonna try to do something. We're gonna see if this will work, okay. So, um, so the second thing you need is terms, any needed terms. This is optional. You may not have any terms to define. Sadie, for example, does not need to define for us what is a gun, we know. Okay, Andrew doesn't have to define for us what is a sport, we know. But Taylor, um, you might need to, and, and um, Logan, you might need to define what is affirmative action. 
um, because that's pretty crucial to your paper. So anything that's important. Now there may be some ideas or terms that arrive later in your paper, like some people who are doing the COVID vaccination, herd immunity is a concept, but they don't need to define it in their history paragraph. If it's part of their argument under confirmation three, they can define it when they get to that part of their paper. So you're just defining terms that the reader needs to know up front to understand your thesis. Okay, then timeline of important events leading to the current issue. Here are two overarching questions. When did your issue begin? And when did it become controversial and why? So um, when did affirmative action begin? Um, was it controversial from the beginning? If not, when did it become controversial and why? Um, or diversity in college admissions, or, um, you know, when did college sports start? When did the issue of paying them begin? And, and why did that, when did that become controversial? So those are just be two guiding questions. Now, the thing I want to say is you don't want to make this a dry report. You want to try to make it a little bit of a narrative you don't want it to be like bullet points. You're, you're giving a story overview. You want to be discerning in the information you include. This is not a history paper. And um, you're only including what's helpful to understanding the rest of your paper. And I'll give you an example of that um, in just a minute. Now, your history section should be no more than a half page. Okay? So just keep that in mind. Fourth. Frame the controversy. So you want to make clear that there are two sides to this issue. We want to know it's controversial. If you've done it in the introduction, you don't need to do it in history. There's a little example. While many people believe that video games cause violence, others proclaim the benefits of video games. And then, of course, you know, and most of you have already done this, you want to end with a transition sentence that reminds the reader of your position without restating the thesis. Okay, so it's your central claim is your main argument that diversity should be a factor in college admissions or um, that gun control should be tightened or that college athletes should be paid. So you want to have a transition sentence that basically states your central claim and then for many reasons. So I've given you a couple examples here. Um, video games are valuable for a variety of reasons. Um, the second one, we haven't talked about questions, but you could actually make your transition sentence a question. Questions are always nice in your paper. You don't want to overuse them, but they do, um, they are processed differently by the human brain. And so when you give your speech, that's a really nice strategy. So you could say, um, the question remains, how are electric cars preferable to traditional cars? And then I gave you mine, total illegal immigration is a pro today, illegal immigration is a problem that continues to plague the U.S. and one that requires a solution. So mine was very, very general. But the whole point of your transition sentence is it positions you to then start arguing for your thesis. Okay, so those are just some guidelines. And I want to give you, if you flip over to the back, I want to show you a sample paragraph. Now, hmm, okay, I'm going to leave this as this is. This is a little exercise that I did with the class, and I can't do it with you all because you're not talking back to me. But basically, here's a, here's a history paragraph, and the things that are highlighted in yellow are unnecessary information. They are things that are, to me, interesting, but they're not necessary, okay? So, um... I'm just going to read over this and talk about the unnecessary pieces of information as I come to them. So notice my, my topic sentence at the beginning. It's important to understand some common terms used in the border wall debate as well as the history of border protection. An illegal immigrant is defined as a foreigner who enters the U.S. without an entry or immigrant visa, especially a person who crosses the border by avoiding inspection or who overstays the period of time allowed as a visitor, tourist, or business person. Okay, note that I put the source where I got this from in parentheses. That's an in-text citation. Also note that I didn't have to use a quote, and that quote is kind of um, heavy, 
I could have paraphrased also, but I wanted to have a few direct quotes in my paper just to increase ethos, so I did a direct quote there. Okay, a border is an agreed upon line that divides countries. Now this is a good example of something that is unnecessary. It insults the intelligence of your reader. Most of us know what a border is, just like most of us know what an iPhone is and what a gun is. So I didn't need that, that's unnecessary. The border between Mexico and the United States is often called the Southern border and it's been problematic throughout American history. I wanted to say that because I'm gonna use the Southern border a lot. I don't wanna keep saying the border between Mexico and the United States. So I wanna make clear Southern border is what that means. Mexico claimed Texas until Texas declared independence in 1836. In 1845, Texas became the 20th state of the union and the, okay, so let's just stop there. There's some fun little history. I'm a history major. I can go down that rabbit hole all day long. However, do, do I need to tell you about Texas being part of Mexico in order for you to understand the need for a border wall? No. Is it important that Texas is the 28th state of the union? No, none of that is central to my topic, so that can be omitted. Also, the Rio Grande River forms a natural border with Mexico. Interesting, not necessary. Now, the next sentence you might say, well, that's not necessary either, except I know that it's gonna tie with one of my reputation arguments. So that's another point, like there are some things that after you write your whole paper, you might go back and go, oh, I really do need that in my intro, okay? So the border also extends through New Mexico, Arizona, Zona, and California. The U.S. Border Patrol was formed in 1924 to protect the southern border, but it was not until the 1980s that illegal immigration across the border became a problem requiring more resources. So here I'm putting this in context. We've patrolled the border for a lot of years, but it became a problem in the 80s. By 2018, there were more than 10.7 million illegal immigrants living in the United States. Illegal immigration is an ongoing problem that requires building a border wall with Mexico. That last sentence is my transition sentence. So why would I highlight that very helpful piece of information before it about how many immigrants there are? Because that's really t speaking of the size of the problem. And the only reason that is highlighted is if any of you were to line this up with the introduction sample I gave you yesterday, you would see that I used that same information in my introduction. So if information is in an introduction, you do not repeat it in the history portion, okay? So you can look at that and you can see, maybe on your copy, you can cross out the things that I highlighted and you can get a good idea of how long a history portion should be. So it's, it's not an exhaustive um, history of your topic. It's just enough to give us background information and maybe even to cue our curiosity. Okay, the second thing I wanna show you, let's see if I can do this, cause I'm kind of digging on having my, my laptop um, actually, my um, tablet is carefully positioned. Let's see if I can pull this up. You guys have a copy of the rubric and I just wanna pull this up to go over it. If I can't, ah, oh, look at that. Technology is working for me tonight. Okay, so um, forgive me. I cannot remember if I've told you all this, but we are in the rough draft portion of mini thesis. So you are going to submit your rough draft of mini thesis in three installments. So this Thursday, you're submitting intro, history, and confirmation one. Next Friday, you'll submit confirmation two and three. And then the following Friday, you'll submit the two refutation paragraphs in your conclusion, okay? So that is in installments. You'll get those back and then you're gonna have roughly, I can't remember, 10 days to revise and to come up with your, your final mini thesis. So let's just go over this. None of this should be super surprising. Well, first of all, I want you to notice this is worth 50 points. 
And that's about how much each of the drafts will be worth. I think maybe next week, so it's only two paragraphs, so maybe it's worth 40. Um, <clears throat> but these are things that you've already seen. Capture reader's attention, provide an overview, end with the thesis, you know this. But this other point, coherency. Coherency is do you make it understandable and also, you want to unify it. You want smooth progression. You don't want to just chunk pieces of information in your introduction like building blocks. I, I like that, that visual of a funnel, okay? And it's, it's smooth. It's running together. Each sentence builds on the sentence before. So that's worth 10 points. Then history. We've already gone all, over all this, but I'm going to hit this coherency. Is it understandable and does it have a logical progression? Okay, and then confirmation point. Now this is gonna be what you work on, um, on I guess for you guys Thursday and Friday. And I'm just gonna tell you, I'm, I'm not gonna speak much on this. I am gonna post a video for everybody that goes over the claim data warrant um, progression because I just, some of you struggle with it and then some of you have got it. You just, it, it's the way your brain works. So anyway, um, confirmation point one, 16 points. Then I'm adding mechanics in. So I, I really didn't do any grammar on your outline except maybe to point out some things like get rid of first and second person pronouns. But now I'm gonna be holding you to the standard because you're writing in complete sentences and you're making paragraphs. So all those things like accurate punctuation, capitalization, correct use of verb tenses. Um, with verb tenses, can I just remind you, avoid a lot of ing verbs. It's just a really good rule of thumb because now you know that an ing word could be a progressive verb form, it could be a participle, or it could be a gerund. It gets super messy. So avoid that. Parallel sentence construction, like we've talked about with your thesis statement. Um, no dangling or misplaced participles. And then complete sentences. And you know my favorite word when I've graded your papers in the past is tighten. I want you to tighten your construction. I want you to practice economy of words. Like try to say things in as few, of wor as, uh, as few words as possible. Okay? And then awkward phrasing. And that can be um, where it's really helpful to have somebody like a parent or an older brother or sister edit your paper. Okay, and then no first or second person pronouns. So make sure that you're pulling those out, total 50 points. So you're gonna upload this on Google Classroom. You do not need to upload a copy of this. I just print a whole bunch of hard copies. I like to do that um, by hand rather than, than a Google Doc. And you'll turn that in on Friday, and I will get those back to you by Monday, I think. Honestly, I'd love to get them back to you by Sunday night, but um, we'll just see how time goes. Okay, so um, let's see. I've talked with a couple of you today. I'm just going to give you a heads up that if you're struggling with something and you need to Zoom with me, Tomorrow would be a good time to Zoom. I'm gonna quarantine for another day at least. And I will be in class um, from 11 to 12. And then I think from like 1.30 to three o'clock. So I've got some time to be able to, to Zoom with you if you need some help. If not, we are going to Zoom on Thursday morning at 11 o'clock. That's just gonna be an optional time where you can ask me any questions, okay? I wish you guys well. Bye.